Madre John Madden in uh, the south end of Boca del Rio, Mexico, along the seawall. Well, pretty much the whole length of Veracruz, there's a seawall like this with these beautiful carved concrete chairs. And uh, I've been up for quite a while and I was sitting on the seawall here listening to uh, an audio tape audio I made last night because there was not enough light in the van to shoot a video. It was a really important story about one of my main girlfriends and uh, I had promised it to a friend of mine uh, who has some issues about weight and this is about my one obese girlfriend ever and how great that relationship was. And I accidentally deleted it. I don't know how I did it. I hit a, apparently hit the button for delete. And then I saw the message saying, do you want to delete this? Do you want to undo the, de it said, do you want to undo the delete? And I usually cancel those. <laughs> so I, undo I canceled the undo and the, the audio went away. So I'm going to tell it as a video now because the light is good. a little snippet of my story. I was 30 years misdiagnosed as bipolar after a wonderful start to my life. In my early 40s, I got misdiagnosed and spent 30 years on awful, wretched drugs. And psychologists myself, who had always rejected labels, I accepted the label just because I was so desperate for something that would make me feel better. Give me, please give me a drug. And they never helped much. In 30 years, none of them ever helped much. And my best psychiatrist at one point said, eh, 5%, that's about all you can expect, but if it keeps you from committing suicide, maybe you'll do it. And I continued to do it because I didn't want to commit suicide. I... Helicopter, wow, that's interesting. I haven't seen helicopters in a while. There's a Navy base at the north end of Veracruz. I never saw helicopters there, but all kinds of naval ships stopped there, so it might be a Navy helicopter. I was raised real Irish Catholic in the, I was born in 46, raised in the 50s and 60s where they were really anti-sex. And the Catholic Church, I think, still is basically anti-sex. They still say, I think the position still is that you're only supposed to have sex for the purpose of procreation. And that even then, if you enjoy it too much, it's a sin. <laughs> so I was raised terrible around sexuality and in an anti-touch, non-touch Irish family, Irish Catholic family. And true to form, married a woman who ended up not being uh, good at sex and we didn't have much of a sexual relationship for 10 years. But I had a period of 10 years from the time of my divorce around age 32 to the time I got diagnosed as bipolar 10 years later uh, where I had good relationships. They were good on a personal level and good on a sexual level. S many of them. Uh, and this is, I'm calling her Linda. I honestly can't remember her name. We're talking 40 years ago. Uh, we had worked together at a children's agency, never close, but we knew each other. And she was like, I think my second affair after my divorce. And the way it became an affair, we had one date and I think I liked it. And I found her funny and interesting, but didn't pursue it because I had issues with dating someone who was so heavy. And she was pretty seriously heavy. Cute, funny, smart, but I couldn't get around that. And a few minutes, so I didn't follow up on it, but a few months later she came to me and said, I'm going on vacation. I want to take a vacation to Cape Cod. We were in Syracuse. And uh, I don't want to go alone. Would, are you interested? And I was because I wanted to take a vacation and I hadn't been to the ocean for a while. And neither of us was 
rich enough to have two hotel rooms, so we were gonna have to split a hotel room. And I said, what, what are we gonna do about sleeping arrangements? Maybe I said, well, we ought to get two beds, and I think maybe we did. But the very first night we got in the same bed and had incredible sex, much to my surprise. I had always dated pretty women and uh, I just was astonished. And the, the key to it being so good was that she was into it. And it's always been true for me that sex is as good for me as it is for my partner. And I devote myself to pleasuring them. And once they get excited, I get super excited. So we had amazing sex that first night and continued to do that every night. And one night, we had sex without waking up. I said to her in the morning, did, did we do something in the middle of the night? And she says, yeah, you know, now that you're mentioning it, I think we did. And we talked about it and what we got was that it, we hadn't, con our conscious brain had not woken up. It was all about bodies and it was fabulous. It was amazing. We were two healthy animals screwing. Uh, so, we, so we continued to sleep together every night and it always was great. We got to Cape Cod and we were going to Provincetown, which was famous for gays and famous as a just super romantic spot out at the tip of Cape Cod. And Linda, I'm calling her, said, could we for that one day pretend that we're really in love? It, would, it'd be, it could be fun. And I was a ham, I was always a ham, loved little plays and stuff. I said, okay, good, let's do that. And it was a rainy day, not windy. I don't remember our umbrella being blown, but we were under an umbrella the whole day, cuddling, 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 and pretending that we were big time in love. And we both had fun doing that, and it was a great day. But the next day we woke up, and we weren't in love. We knew we weren't in love. We didn't even know if we would see each other once we got back to Syracuse, and it cleared the whole thing. I don't remember if we even slept together going back to Syracuse, but we never saw each other. I think we never talked with each other ever again. So the learning for me about that was don't pretend to be something you're not. Uh, don't try to make a relationship something it's not. These days I say you can't get groceries from a hardware store. Pay attention to what the other person wants. And I still haven't had sex. It's been 25 years since I've had intercourse. Uh, Partly because I pay really good attention to what the other person wants, and I seem to keep choosing women who, at the last minute, will. I, what I realize is, no, she, she needs to set boundaries, and that's what she's doing, and I'm going to support her in it. Stuff like that. But I'm way over the notion that you're, a woman is supposed to look a certain way, and in Mexico women of all different body sizes know that they're hot. I think it's partly because they've been raised so beautifully and come out with such great self-esteem. And because Mexico is not caught, there's not a culture of magazine looks. And so men consider women who are heavy hot. If they, if they think they're hot, the guy knows that they're hot. It's black culture is a lot that way too. Uh, where the, it's famous that men like women with big booties and heavy women are, in black culture, they, know, they can know that they're really hot. New Orleans was full of that. So, okay, came out shorter this way. Thanks, bye.